Photoshop's Generative AI Fill and Generative AI Expand will often produce very low resolution results. So in this episode, I'm gonna show how you can get high resolution results, and I'm going to do it with a real world example for a photo that I recently shot for a client, and then I had a request come in to change the perspective that required AI Fill. Now, this is something that then you can apply to just about any size photo to get these high resolution results. I'm gonna explain why the problem is occurring, steps to take in what order to make sure that you can get these high resolution AI fill images, and then I'm gonna throw in some bonuses along the way. So this is the original image here, and the request from the client is to have a vertical representation of this that showed more of the range hood and also a little bit more of the floor. Now, even though this photo was approved on site, which is the case, by the way, when you're shooting with designers and remodel companies, you're getting paid by the hour to do this type of stuff. They thought that, well, is it possible in post-processing to bring a little more of that out? And of course, my answer is, of course. So you do get paid extra also for these edits. So it's another money-making opportunity if you can learn these techniques. So I'm gonna show you how. So what you do here is you would go out here and you would recompose your shot for a vertical representation by grabbing the crop tool. Now, when you grab the crop tool, you can, by doing generative expand, automatically fill this, but we're not gonna do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna compose to come over here to just before where the microwave starts here, and then go over here and just be on the side of those cutting boards, and then bring it down a little bit so I'm seeing a little bit more floor than ceiling. So it'd be right at about there. Now, if you were to do the generative expand, as you've probably seen in other tutorials, when you're at the crop tool, you would select then the generative expand. You don't wanna do that. You wanna make sure that it's just transparent and that's what the default is. When you're done, then you can just click the checkbox and it'll crop our new composition. So now we just wanna fill in this area and this area up here. Now this is a full vertical representation of this. Typically it wouldn't be cropped this much. Usually we would do a four by five crop, which is more typical when they're sharing, for instance, on Instagram. And it's very rare that you would even print something with this type of two, three format. But this is a worst case scenario to try to show you everything involved for doing something like this. Now the problem that happens with all this AI generative fill and generative expand is that Photoshop only provides a 1024 resolution on a fill area. What that means is this red block here, that's 1024 by 1024. So even though this is would fill up here in this little block right here, it would have to expand that. So it would have to expand it across and you're gonna get a low resolution images. And that's why you would get something that looks very grainy and just pixelated, not very good looking to do a fill. So there's a reason why they do this too. And I doubt very much that they're going to change this very much over the years because it's just a bandwidth issue. You don't know if somebody's gonna have a 20,000 pixel type of crop that they wanna do. So by keeping it small, they can keep it where you just need to fill in some stuff. Maybe they will have a pay service later. Off topic, let's talk about fixing this problem. So remember, we're constrained to this 1024 size. So what we wanna do is take this in chunks. And you may have seen other tutorials where they do this, but when it comes to having something very realistic, we need to help AI along to get fairly realistic results. So what we wanna do is to take this in chunks and fill a little bit at a time. And remember, you're getting paid by the hour to do this for this type of editing. You wanna grab your rectangular marquee tool. That's over here, your rectangular marquee tool. And you wanna use a fixed size. Now by default, that's usually normal, but by fixed size, you can put in your width and height. Then when you come over here and stay above where your edits are, then you can click here and you can see it's doing a 1024 box, just like we had specified. Now this may be just a little bit too much for doing this because we don't need to fill, as you can see across here, all these other areas. We just need to sample from them. So we can make that box smaller. So let's deselect that, control D, and let's change for this particular instance, let's change this box down to, let's say, 970 pixels. 
Now that's for the height. And now when I click over here, then you can see it's grabbing a lot less. I could even go less so that I'm just grabbing small portions of this. Now the trick though is I don't wanna just start here and go across. I need to think about how AI is going to fill this in. And there's two tricky parts here. One, this is the only part of ceiling that we have when it overlaps and sees this. And over here, it's gonna see then the trim and the top of the range hood has the same type of trim as these cabinets up here. So we'll do one here, but we have to think about the next one. So first off, let's do a fill. We wanna make sure that under window, we have checked contextual taskbar. That will leave our generative fill taskbar up here where now we can just say generative fill, don't type anything and just say generate. When it's done, we can see that now we have three choices over here to select from. And whichever one you think works best, we'll just go with it. This is ceiling, it's not that big of a deal. We'll go with this one. Now what we wanna do is it figured out the ceiling, it figured out the seam line here for where the ceiling meets the wall, but now we have to think about this over here on the cabinets. So let's try it from this corner here and we'll take our marquee tool once again, remember it's at that fixed size, and by the way, you can, as long as you're holding down your, uh, your left mouse button, you can keep dragging this into position where you want. So we'll take it all the way up here to the top, and then we'll do another generative fill and generate. And once again, then we have three choices. This just looks terrible. This looks pretty good. And this looks also very good as well. So now it's a matter of what do we find best for the trim? Because all these colors and stuff, that can be corrected. But AI is gonna need to know when we start getting into this territory, how it's going to deal with the ceiling, how it's gonna deal with the trim. So let's go with this one and now let's do our next block and we'll do it right next to here and do another generate right about there. So we'll do generative fill and generate. And it's given us once again, three choices and none of them look all that great. So let's back out of this one. Let's just get rid of this variation that we did here and let's do it from the other side and let's see what happens. So we'll do our generative fill from here. We'll do generative fill and generate. And these are somewhat better or probably something we could use then. It's still not the same trim, but I could add this in later in post. It's not that hard to do and I can show you how I would do it in this particular case. But let's do our next little block over here and let's see now if we can get somewhat of a better result starting from here. Now we'll still have a little bit left over and that's something we can easily deal with, but we'll just do this right here and then we'll do another generate. And that's not looking too bad. At least we have something once again that is now editable. We just have to select which one we think would look best. And at this point, it's kind of split in hairs between the two, but let's just go with this one. Now we've still got this sliver here. There's no need to do a fixed size. You can use the marquee tool by using normal and then just select something here. And then we'll do our last generate for the top. So, so far so good, we've got something at least we can edit and I'm gonna show you how to fix this because this is not accurate. So as a bonus, I'm gonna show you how to do that. But first, let's attack the bottom here. So we've got some issues here when we go to the bottom of the picture because we only have a small segment of hardwood flooring here. So we probably should start from here. If we start from the other side, it's gonna be doing more cabinets. So let's zoom out here just a little bit. Let's grab our marquee tool once again again, we'll use that at that fixed size. We're gonna to go to the full 1024 by 1024, and then we'll start from this corner. We'll grab this segment here, we'll overlap just a little bit, and we'll do a generative fill here. Now it's critical at this point, when you're limited on what you can sample from, that this is what you find acceptable because this is what's going to be then used feeding the AI engine. Obviously we don't want this, that just looks awful. But this would be a good candidate or maybe this one, but I'm gonna go with this candidate and then all I'm gonna do is really quickly, I'm gonna speed this up, not to waste your time, and I'm gonna fill in these other few blocks right here. So not bad. We still have this area here, but the easy part here now is just don't worry about the resolution for small areas that are near the bottom, near the top. I'm just gonna take the polygon lasso tool and I'm just gonna draw around this area. I'm not too concerned about the resolution here. Once I do that, I'll do my last generative fill. 
And now I have something that is editable. I have something that has expanded. So just to revisit real quick, this is where we started. This is what we have now. But there are still some things here to edit and I wanna cover these bonus tips with you real quick. The first thing, let's get rid of this contextual text bar because it will just get in the way of everything we're doing. So go to Window, Contextual Text Bar, just check that off. Now what we're going to do is a lot of different editing up here. And if you're not familiar with some of this, if this goes a little too fast, these are things that I also cover in my course on expert editing for interior photography. If you're not familiar with that course, it's part of my pro series where I've got courses on professional interior real estate photography. Also then that expert editing course and also professional exterior photography as well. I have links to all my courses, also my books as well, down in the description for this video. So what we want to do here though is edit this line here. We need to have that up and we also need to have some better trim up here at the top. Now the client might be satisfied with this and if we cropped it to the more realistic resolution which would be in that 4x5 scenario which if we went here and selected 4x5 you can see we wouldn't even have to worry much about that. So what we can do is we can stamp everything into one layer to make it easy then to edit this particular line in. We go to our top layer and up here, I'm not worried about here, this was just our example block. So up here you do Control, Alt, Shift, E. And what that did was then it made a single layer. You can see I could turn everything off or on. So this is our stamped layer. And this is what we'll do some special edits on. That's everything combined. So what we can do here then is we can zoom in and decide how we want to then edit this particular line of the ceiling. So here what I can do is take the polygon tool and I can draw a polygon just below here so I get some of that line but parallel that line. So I'd come up here and let's say to there. This gives me then what I call a boundary edit. There's a lot of ways to do boundary edits I talk about in my courses here. But in this boundary edit then, we want to draw this line from here to there. Now we don't want to include though this area, this range hood in there. So what you can do is you would use the standard quick selection tool and use subtract. When you do that and then you select the range hood, then it'll subtract those areas. You can also though use the polygon tool as well and in here you would also use subtract and that's what this selection is here. This is to add, this is to subtract. So we'll just select this area of the range hood so that we can just not worry about touching that. Okay, so now we have only this area selected that we're going to be editing. Now I can take and use the clone tool and I could clone this part of the ceiling here and I'll sample it by holding down the Alt key and click and then I'll go over here and figure out where that probably is and then draw that in here. You can see I'm getting a little bit of the cabinet. Okay, so that's looking pretty good, but I've got some weird colors going on here. So I can just erase that if I want to. Now I can go up here and draw a boundary that just includes that line, do that, and then I could clone from here. So I'll use the clone tool again, and I'll use it fairly large, and I'll just clone some of this stuff here so that it fills in that so that we don't have all that there. Okay, so now we have somewhat of a line and I could clean that up a little bit better. We wanted to also include some trim up here. So we wanted to do that better. So one way to do that is just to take a piece of trim and put it up there. So I'm going to use the polygon tool here and I'm going to grab here this. I'm going to draw a polygon around this. Also include some of the shadow. And then on this layer, I'll do Control C to copy it, Control V to paste it. I'll use the Move tool and put that up here. Now what I can use is the Distort tool to distort this into place. And what you would do is you would go to Edit and then Transform and then Distort. And then in here, you drag all these various things to kind of distort this into place where you think that should be. And that looks pretty good. Now we should also have a piece of trim on the side. 
So we can duplicate this layer or we already have it copied in memory. Let's do control V again and it pasted that new piece of trim. Now I can take this trim and say, I just need a piece of it. So why don't I just take the polygon lasso tool and I'll go across here and I'm just gonna make a wood cut right there and just hit delete. Okay, now I can take this small piece and put it into place by once again using edit, transform, and then distort. So I'll distort this so that it goes into place right about here. And if I zoom in really close, I can get really accurate on that and where that should be. And so this is a rough cut of where that would be. Now, once again, I might want to adjust some of the shadows behind here, fix some of this up, but so far so good, not too bad by being able to replace this up here. And one easy way to do that is to keep editing on this particular layer that we were working on here. So if we take this layer and we protect everything that we were editing here by just drawing a polygon kind of around here, so after selecting this, you want to invert it so that you're selecting everything but that. So to invert it, you do control shift I. Now that inverted the selection. You can see it said select inverse. And what you can do then is on our original layer here, not our wood trim. That's what these two are here. I'm going to take a brush tool and I'm going to sample the ceiling color. And just with a very low flow brush, about 20%, I'm just gonna tap in a little bit of that color and immediately that shadow goes away. So if we take a look at what it was before and after, this is what we had and just some simple brushing took care of that. And I could do the same thing over here. I could take this and say, you know what, let's blend that in with a little better color. So now you see some of that line is getting a little softer. The color's looking a lot more accurate. If we zoom back out here, now we have something fairly good looking. We could keep futzing with this. And once again, you're getting paid by the hour to do this, but let's take a look at what we had once again before and after. If we look at where we started, we had this. And if we look at what we finished with, we had this. If we go in 100% and take a look at this, it's hard to tell where AI started and stopped until we turn that off. We can see this is where it started. It's very, very sharp up here. We can do the same thing looking at the bottom of the image and how sharp did that turn out to be? Once again, this is with everything we did. This is without it. It was hard to even tell where AI started and where AI stopped.